Well, hello. It has been a minute for me to get back here to talk to you about part two of the closed eye series. But I wanted, as you can see there in my topic, I wanted to try to see if the Lord would allow me to give you some activation keys. And I wanted to give you the first one, and I'm so excited to be able to share from my experience personally and from my study along with a wonderful apostle who is an alumni of ELST who has actually written a book on these different 40 ways that you need to really grow in trying to increase and enhance your vision. Because many of us are stuck in places that has kept us from really seeing where God is trying to take us. Now, we might as well go on and face it. Many of us have seen things and God has prepared us, but many of us are not intently, and that's that word I have there for you, intently beholding. And that's one of the first activation keys that I want to give you uh, from the study from what she has given over the years. I really, really dig deep into what her message was about, uh, and it really made me begin to see. And as a seer, I have learned that to look intently and what this particular first one intently is talking about, we have to behold our inner sight. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so I want to give you all a couple of scriptures after I pray with you. I pray that God will get you to really, really see in the spirit where I'm coming from. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for this spirit of obedience that we will begin to really, really look into what you're giving us, what you're showing us for this new time that we're walking into. And I pray, God, in Jesus' name, as we repent for being delayed, we decree in Jesus' name that now you are giving us an ignitement in our seeing in the spirit. I speak that over you now. I decree that there's an enhancement over you now, that you begin to see things ahead, things that are close up on you. You begin to discern them better as you close your eyes and look in intently in the spirit. I speak the Holy Spirit of truth to minister to you. We bind deception. We bind the pan uh, spirit that tries to give you mental confusion. We bind that even now in the name of Jesus. And we decree that you will hear God's voice. You will see in the spirit what he is showing you and intently you will take the inner sight and go ahead and be obedient to where God is trying to take you for this last day in Jesus name. Well I pray I get to activate toward the end and I pray that you share this message. Now I want to give you Romans chapter 8 verse uh, 18 and 19 I'm going to read that one to you before we get into our lesson for tonight and this is a classroom so I want you to be sure and get your pen and take that down Romans chapter 8 verses 18 and 19 verse 18 says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, okay? 19 says, but the earnest expectation of the creature waited, that's very important, for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, I want you to go ahead and read that entire part all the way up to verse, um, I guess, verse 23. Really need to read that whole chapter. But I want to share another scripture, what I think is going to really, really pull you in to what God is saying in regards to intently beholding. And that is the Micah chapter 7 and verse 7. It says, therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear. Yes, he's heard you already. But what are you going to do about what you hear? We're going to talk about it in a few minutes. Because remember, your eyes can hear too. But many of us won't let God speak through us. In the eyes that we behold, what he's trying to show us in our inner insight. And so Habakkuk 2 and 1, everybody know that one. I will stand at my guard post and station myself on the ramparts. I will watch to see what he will say to me and how I will answer my reproofs. Now, I want to also give you Second Corinthians 3, 1 through 6 which is very significant about beholding for this time that we're in because many of us are spiritually blinded or have been blindsided by things that appear to be holy or appear to be what God would have us to do when we're not beholding, we're not taking the time to really gaze into what we need to see with our eyes and hear with our eyes while they are closed. I don't want to preach. But second three, second Corinthians 3, verse uh, 1 through 6, I'm only going to give you this part. In verse 6, he says, He has made us competent as ministers 
of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit give it life. Now, that's a whole other version, but I really want to make sure that we understand that our eyes, many of us are walking around in spiritual blindness. We can't see. God has given us many, many signs for us to see things that is particularly very personal to us because we all have a personal destiny that God is trying to take us on our journey. Come 21, we need to be in position to be whole. I don't want to preach. When I begin to look at this and how God is really minister to me about behold. So I want to talk about a little bit about the structure of our eye when it comes to seeing with them clothes. You know, many of the medicines today uh, that is scientists have called it CEV, C like call, E like Edward, V like Victor. And so what they call it uh, like a hallucination, a visualization, where when we have our eyes closed, this pseudo, what they call hallucination, is there that gives us this awareness that something is, uh, we're perceiving something, okay? But when they say this is CEV, they say, that, oh, they hallucinate, and this is not really real. And so we're not talking about something that is mystical. We're talking about something that is very, very spiritual, because many people are seeing visions and things that are de- uh, that are demonic. They're not from God. Many people are hallucinating, maybe from medication or whatever they're going through, so they're challenged. So the devil knows how to deceive you and also to take us to a deceptive realm when we're not praying for God to anoint our eyes, according to Ephesians chapter 1, that we may be enlightened, that we may see in the spirit. So what we need to understand when they talk about CVE versus a closed eye in the spirit realm, where we can behold what God wants to show us. He talked about that over and over. John did when he beheld what God showed him, took him through these different levels and dimensions of the glory to show him the things to come for us to really study revelations about. And I behoove that you will study revelations every night before you go to bed, that you may be whole, hot, sick, and evil, that you may be whole what God is trying to show you while you're asleep or while your eyes are closed while you're awake. So this type of hallucination that the CEV is talking about is not what we're talking about in the spirit realm. There, there may be images that you may see that you have never paid attention to. There may be some things that God is trying to give you information about while your eyes were closed or while you had a vision that you totally ignored. God wants you to be awakened spiritually in the spirit realm with the information that he's showing you. But I'm talking to you with your eyes closed. I want to talk to you about preparing to have your eyes closed. You remember when Daniel saw and beheld so much Daniel said, and, and another scripture I want to give you is Daniel chapter 7, verse 2. Daniel spake, and he said, I saw in my vision by the night. Now, he's talking about sleeping, okay? Many have visions while they sleep. I'm talking to you about beholding while your eyes are closed and you are awake, okay? So he said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove up on the sea. You know, and so we need to look at what is this about, this particular uh, beholding. So important, Dr. Murphy. Why is that so important? Well, I want to try to talk about a little bit how we can look at God is showing us how this word behold means that we need to envision. That means inner vision. See in one's mind's eye. We need to picture what God is saying. I know a whole bunch of people who are picturing having sex with people. Picturing in their mind's eye would it be like what my husband or my wife would look like. Picturing in their mind's eye where it would be like to be in another country of business. Some people are astral projecting themselves. That's a whole other subject we can talk about later. They behold a thing and they begin to, in the demonic realm, astral project themselves there because they beheld it in the wrong connotation and not in the spirit realm of what God would want you to do, to gaze up on what he is showing you as I spoke to you about the scriptures ahead just a few minutes ago. So we want to envision in the vision that God has given you in the mind's eye in the spiritual realm of kingdom, to picture, to mentally look upon, to gaze it, to take regard about it, to consider what you see. Let me slow it down. So many of us don't consider what we see. 
But when you really do this beholding, it gives you this breath of fresh air. It gives you this, ah, just like John talked to us about what he beheld. It made us zoom in on what he is saying. If you just begin to read uh, Revelation chapter 1 all the way through 3 or 4, you begin to see it's a breath of fresh air that you may gaze and see. The seven ministry spirits begin to get you to see, get you to breathe in. I don't want to preach. Get you begin to look at in a great sight a great light, what he's trying to show you in regards to beholding with your inner eye, your inner sight. My God, your eyes closed, but yet you're still wide awake. I don't want to preach. It just it just fascinates me how God has used me over the years. I didn't know what this was. You know, I didn't I didn't understand it. But He has promised us we can, we can move and be in light. According to Ephesians three verses sixteen through nineteen, God has given us this enablement enablement to be able to be enlightened in our inner man that we can comprehend and we can begin to see what he is saying but many of us in our inner person we can't comprehend many times what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of the thing but god knows us he knows how far and that he could pour in he knows how far you will go to, re- to really chase after him to get the knowledge to surpass the natural realm and so i want to talk a little bit about beholding I want to share a little bit about what we need to understand when I'm talking about behold. In the Hebrew, this word means kaza. That's C-H-A-Z-A-H. And kaza, that means that we are envisioning. We are looking within as Daniel did and as John beheld. We want to gaze upon what God is showing us. You know how it is when you have your eyes closed and you think sometimes, oh, I was looking at something. But many of you, come on right now, close your eyes. Just close your eyes for just a second. Just mm. a oh. Yeah, if you close your eyes for just a second, many of you may see a white spot. And you may see, like, different colors and things like that in your eyes. You may see things that you're trying to figure out, what is that? But your eyes may not be completely closed. So, But if you look in your inner spirit, when you're calling out to God and you're asking the Holy Spirit of truth to minister to you, because right now my eyes are closed and I'm talking to you. And I can see light. I can see so many different lights. But then when I zoom into that light and ask God to reveal his light, his truth to me. We're not talking about a mystical type of thing that people look and gaze upon things or pendulums and things like that, demonic, or, or, or looking at something for a long time and say, speak, Lord, speak, Lord. No, no, no. We, we are talking spirit to spirit. Yes, God. Asking God to talk to you, not out of your mouth, but out of your heart. Yes, God. Talk to me, Daddy, about what I see. Open my eyes. Come on and do it. Open my eyes that I may see in the spirit. Hey. My God. And so when you start to think about this, when your eyes pop open, you begin to think, I saw a bunch of things that didn't look like much of nothing, Dr. Murphy, but a bunch of here, a light here, there's something there, something pop up here and there. But when we see these inner images, what I'm trying to get you to see, you're actually looking at information that God is trying to get to see how long you're going to be still to watch. Is it all? You heard what I said, what he said there too. To uh, to uh, both uh, Habakkuk said and, he, and Michael said that he is going to look unto the Lord. He's got to see what God is saying. He's going to watch Habakkuk said. And many of us don't want to watch nothing but TV. We can watch all of that junk in our eyes. And this is the reason why a lot of us are walking around with dead men eyes. I'm telling you right now, you've got to understand that the reason why many people, when they die, they may die with their eyes partially open. We see people sometimes sleep with their eyes partially open because when we go to bed and we're getting our third realm of sleep anyway we're as dead men but our eyes are naturally the eyes naturally remain partially open when people die because the muscle relaxation many times when they die it's in this particular state and what they used to do i don't know if they still do that in funeral homes or whatever but they got a whole other techniques right now they used to put cotton balls under the eyelids, like toothpicks, just to keep them so that they can shut, you know, to keep them shut so they won't open up, especially when they're, you know, having the services and the caskets of open, I mean, open casket viewing. But if you 
would look intensely. This word intensely means that you are purposely searching. You're pur- purposely, earnestly concentrating hard. You're chasing hard after what you want daddy to show you. You're watching intensely. You are watching carefully about what your eyes are seeing. My God. I remember when I first realized I could see like that with closed eyes, I kept asking God, what is this? What are these people you showing me? What is that? Why do I see this bridge? Why do I see these colors? Why do I see this courtroom and people? What are you showing me ahead, Daddy? What is it that I need to see? My God, I know I'm talking to somebody. Why do I see someone in a casket? Why do I see? I know I'm talking to you. Why do I see myself on a platform preaching to many? Why do I see that, but yet I have not answered the call? I know I'm talking to you. This is the hour you have to behold. You have to answer the call. It's way too late. The Bible constantly telling us, as I said earlier, earlier on in Romans, that, that God is seeking that we will prepare ourselves. Even now, I'm talking to you. For the times are here for the manifestations of the sons of God to do what God has told us to do. Why? Because we are so busy trying to quote all the scriptures and the devil knows the scripture. He want to see the, the Holy Spirit is saying, let me show you what's really in you for your demonstration power that I vested in you. Yes, so that the times that we're in, we can pull down the demonic gatekeepers and the demonic watchers that are watching over us because they know your destiny. The peep in the see in, do you see me? Yes, do you see what I'm trying to block? that you will not go ahead because you're scared, because you think about what they're going to say about you going ahead. There you are. Yes, there you are. You don't want to go further. But the Bible constantly telling us that we think about it, if you look intently and behold, that you will know that in this last day, he wants that the manifestations of his glory to work through us, okay? He wants you to go forward. He wants you to simply do what he's told you to do. He wants you to simply believe what he told you in your ear, in your dream. He is speaking to some audibly, prophetically is what I'm talking about, and he is speaking some prophetically in their dreams, but they won't move forward. Why? Because they don't want to behold. They don't want to listen to what God is saying because they fear. They fear. I want you to hear me in the spirit now. The manifestations of God in you must be manifested before 21. Oh, I don't want to preach. You have got to spiritually connect the revelations that he's daily showing you in your walk, that he's daily showing you through different things and different signs that he's showing you in the spirit because he can't get you to pay attention to the dream, so he has to keep showing you different things, seeing different words over and over again, hearing different people say things over and over again, people that you entrust to hear or believe what they're saying that God is talking through them to you. It will stop. So this simply means what he wants you to do, when he wants you to do it, and like I always say, with who? you got to make sure for the time that we're in, you don't get twisted in the wrong place and with the wrong people. See why? Because the pan demon in this last day, this demonic watcher, I talked about that a while back, he wants to control your mind. He wants to take territorial regions from where God has already assigned you to or you know you've been called to and you back up. Because you figure, oh, I really don't know. Well, you ain't, none of us know anything without God. And none of us can do anything without God. So the Holy Spirit is there to help you understand where you're going to rule at in the different regions, where he's going to anoint you for such time as this. So you got to let God fill you with his glory so you can be in the revelation of where he's taking you to so you can move quickly before 21. You're already late. You know it because of fear. The Holy Spirit is not going to force himself on you, but he will allow us to give ourselves to him willfully. I'm telling you, God wants to live fully in you, in the spirit realm, where he can move and have his being in you in this very, very unique way of the gift that he's called you to. I'm not talking about your talent, like when you can cook and do hair and all that, and that they can kiss each other too with the gift. I'm talking about the anointing to do the work that he's called you to do. I don't want to preach. Let me slow it down. So you got to let God use 
in you. Let him refresh you. Let him renew you. Yes, we've all been hit. Yes, we've all been going through something. Yes, we all are still grieving. I grieve just to look at the earth, how it's grown, and, and, and from all the bloodshed in, in the earth and all the things that's happened to so many have lost lives with COVID. But God has got to get us to come to the realization that he is knocking at the door, saying, here I am. Will you let me come in and show you great and mighty things I can do through you for my glory? He is showing us I'm knocking that I want you to behold. My God. Let me slow it down. Here I go. Let me look at my notes because I went too far. Anyway, you may be seeing images. You may be seeing stuff that you haven't paid much attention to. Because your eyes are wide open, you're still a little scared about what you've seen and about what you hear. But that these these images do matter. You need to pay attention. God's actually giving you that information. God's actually trying to show you the thing that may look horrible, the thing that may look like afflictions that may be coming or whatever. Many of these could be visions or for you to behold to understand that you can fight. Most of the people have discovered that they can see, but they won't activate it. Today I pray that this message is going to activate you, that you're going to discover, that you're going to see in your inner eye that it's not mystical, that it's Holy Spirit speaking to you by the Spirit. You know, you're going to see these colorful visions and things like that when you close your eyes. But what you've got to do is right now tell God to anoint your eyes, to enable you to see in the Spirit. I'm afraid that you'll get that spiritual insight before we get off here, but let me talk to you a little bit about what she said on Behold so I can get off. She talked about that we need to look and make sure that we behold. That means we have to focus. We have to draw in. We have to look upon that which what we are seeing. Okay, some things that we're seeing in the natural, of course, they're being manifested in different ways because we've got so many fallen demons in the earth today because they know it's time is up. Okay, so we got to make sure that we look at what we are beholding, look at it and behold. That means draw in, take a good, good long look at it, make sure that you are analyzing it in the spirit realm with your eyes in the spirit, not in the flesh. That means you got to look at intently with spiritual accuracy by asking God, who can only give us spiritual accuracy, what am I seeing? Why are you showing me this, Father? Make it clear to me. And I know that's what I do when I see with my eyes closed, I open up and go, what? What? What is that, Daddy? Make it clear to me, Father. So that means now I've got to identify. I've got to look in the Spirit. I have to take time. See, many of us can't see because we won't take time to behold what we are seeing. When we behold, that means we're sitting still. Nothing is interrupting us. Nothing is taking our concentration away from us. We can't just glance at it. We've got to gaze. We have to gaze up on it. That means don't turn away. Sure, some of you may be seeing demonic things and stuff like that. I'm not telling you to gaze upon it, but if you see it, God is trying to show you it is a manifestation. I'm trying to show you that the power it will shine, that rests upon you by my glory, by what I vested in you, by the blood that I have shed on the cross for you, that you can come up against it and no weapon, no demon, nothing else is going to be able to prosper. You can stand up and say, for God I live and for God I die. And I know know that no weapon that you have formed against me is going to prosper, and I know that greater is he in me than the holy fire of God and the blood of God pulls down and shut gates of hell and open heaven. I know I'm talking to you. Hey! So you got to be whole in a way like never before for the times that we're in right now. And so she talked about the concentration. She talked about for you to look at it and not just concentrate on it, but study it. As I have been, study what you see. Study what you hear. Study what God is showing you and really behold it. She also said that we had to observe these images that God has put before us, and we've got to notice, it, notice them in detail. We've got to look at what has God put in us with our spiritual eye to be able to see with spiritual x-ray eyes to be able to unfold if this is really a prophet talking to me or is this a demon? Is this really my daughter talking to me or is this a demon behind her, through her, talking to me? We need to be able to discern in the spirit. We need to look at the perspective of what is coming from and through who. And we need to make sure that we look at the knowledge that we have gained or many of you have only got carnal knowledge through things that you study. But remember, as I said earlier on, the letter does kill it, and we need the Bible. But the Spirit, it will 
cow is what's going to give the life. The spirit is what's going to destroy the yoke, okay? You need to understand the anointing, the all on your life that you never thought that you have because you would fail to test or try the spirit by the spirit. You will be lost and destroyed by the pan that it will try that's released in the earth today. Yes, it's released so that the devil can make you believe that this is who you are and what you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing, and it's all deception because you cannot see in the spirit. Mm. You know, I was reading a quote. I'm getting ready to get off of here. It was very profound to me, and I want to share that quote with you. I thought that God would allow me to share this. Let me see if I can pull it up on my notes here. The quote was, no, that's not it. Let's see. Anyway, the quote went is this way, and I begin to think about this, what I'm sharing with you now. You know, it says that, and this this is my particular message that I put in the quote as I begin to get revelation. It says, facing a failure or you may be hiding from the call of God for your destiny or your purpose, or you continuously have this fear of doubt and unbelief where you don't think you can do it or you don't have the money or you don't know if that's really God's voice. That's because you won't be whole. You won't be still. There's a time. You won't be still to hear what God is saying to you. So what you do is you find yourself just over and over again doing things, but yet that doubt and unbelief sends the, the warfare of fear of failure. And that means that this type of person, if you're going through that, this is what we, as a people, many times is what we blunder. That means we have blundered what God is trying to get us to move forward in. Instead, we blunder. This means that we're careless. We're blindsided. I think I talked about that a while back. We're blindsided because we made such a bad mistake or we, we're shameful about the thing we've done. So now we've become too frightful or we won't repent or we do a false repentance because we're too ashamed to make the change, because you want to just keep moving in the lie that you heard this proper lie or that you proper lied to somebody about what God said to you and God said nothing. And so now you're too shameful or too prideful to go before God and repent about the thing that was deceptive, and so you won't make a change. And because you lack this repentance, you find yourself hanging in the balance. I don't want to preach. you hanging in the balance, so to speak. And so what this means is now when you're hanging in the balance, you have this fear of indecision. You don't know what to do. You lack vision. You lack a beholding of what God is trying to show you in the spirit realm that you can do these great manifestations of his glory in the natural. I don't want to preach. These godly visions what God has already shown you, told you who you are, shown you that you now went to another dimension in his glory. But you're not going to be capable of doing it. And what this, this message is saying is that we will not be capable of cashing in in the spirit realm on what God has already shown you. Well, why? Because you don't want to experience. You're going to most time. You don't want to experience or behold what God wants to get glory through you to others. I don't want to preach. I'm going to stop right there. That's what that, that's what that, that, that message was about, that quote. And so what matters most to us right now is always about what we can see in the natural. This is why many of us can't behold what God is trying to show us in the spirit. Let me get off of here. But I want you to be prepared now to let me do that on part three. I'll, I'll come back to talk about the next part that she talked about is discovery. You know, we've got to have that ability to really, really, Focus in on discovering what he's saying. So the next activation would be that, what she talked about. And I want to say in this particular segment, you know, when we fail to not take true observation of what God is trying to show us or, or take time to study it or research it, and we don't prepare. I've been talking about that over and over, over, and over again. you got to be prepared before 21. Now, we got, what, supposed to be about 32 days coming tomorrow? Yeah, coming Monday. And uh, not including uh, the 31st, uh, that is the 30th of this month. So we got 31 days in, Jan in December. But we only got 30 when December hit, okay? And that 30 matters. And so you don't want to wait to the 31st, start talking about it or make a decision you're going to fast or make a decision you're going to start getting some things. But you need to be writing it down now, what God is trying to show you about the demonic watches and blockers that's blocking you. Okay, and that is going to cost you. If you really be quiet and hear God and shut your eyes and get a quiet place, you're going to hear him about some police people and places that you're going to have to stay away from and people that you're going to connect from. 
It's just, it is what it is. If you're going to get to this next dimension to be whole, my God, what he's trying to show you. And yes, it's going to take time. It is going to take in the investigation. It is going to take spiritual pre- uh, preparation. Uh, and it's going to take uh, spiritual perspectives that God is trying to show you. And that's the only thing you're going to be able to do is get that word and make sure you know that that word get down in you, what God has promised you, what he's shown you, that you won't have error because you have made the preparation. You have took the time to behold and look intently. And you have also realized that people who are still around Around you, that could be haters and fakers, and of course, demonic blockers and, and watchers that the enemy has already assigned to your life because it already know where you're headed. So it's trying to block you, and you allowing it because you won't be whole or sit still alone to let God let you move and flow with the manifestations of His glory through you. Mm, I pray this helped you. Oh, so much more to talk about when it comes to testing and trying what we see and what we hear in the Spirit. My God. Well, I want to pray with you now. Put yourself in a position right now. I want you, if you got something to put over your eyes, put it over your eyes, and I want you to come back and uh, and listen to what Holy Spirit is saying in this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that that one has heard me. Father, I activate their eyes to be intently gazing in the Spirit with purpose, with ears to hear, with their eyes to hear. My God, in the spirit, I decree in Jesus' name by the power of the blood as we come repenting, Father, for anything that we've done or said, anything that we gazed upon that has tainted our eyes. I speak that your eyes will become new. Come on, anoint them, anoint them, anoint them. And you get off of here, anoint them. I anoint your eyes that you may behold, yes, God, that you may look intently. I charge by the apostolic oil that's vested in me, and by the power of the Most High God, Jesus Christ is his name. I thank you, Father, that even now we bring our soul, our body to the altar and say we're sorry. We repent for those things that we've allowed our eyes to become tainted with. Lord, we thank you and we bless you for this glory of being able to see. It will shine in the spirit. I speak that you're strengthened in the mightiness of his power through your eyes, through your inner sight that you may see in the spirit. I decree that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one that is your Lord, the one that is your Savior, that you will by faith hear and move according to the purposes that he's already planned for you, that the time is here, the time has come, that you will manifest his glory. Yes, God, and that the power of the words that you speak, the power that you see and behold, that God is showing that you will see, that you will move, that you will give God glory in the earth. Yes, God, but now I speak the roots of your vision become strong, that you will see and be grounded. Yes, God, in the spirit, I speak that the Holy Spirit fire of God will burn away everything that is not of him that you will see clearer in the spirit that you will know the love of Jesus that he is there to take you and to thrust you in this new dimension before 21 that you will see and know the breadth the length the height and the depth that you will be able to see the fullness of his glory that you'll work in the power of his might I speak that over you now by the power of the blood and know the name but Jesus, it is so. God bless you. Remember, you got to challenge your flesh to die so that you can begin before 21 to fast and pray and ask God to let you have an increase of seeing in the spirit within. God bless you. Love you so much. Please share this message.